In this video, I'm going to explain how to take a digital painting to the next level. This is the first video in this series, which will help you on how to critique and improve your own work and get better at digital art or drawing in general. This time, I'm going to focus on the refinement part of the process, which is the transition from stage 3 to 4. The best way I've found to review my work is to have the original reference photo overlaid on my art. So when I turn it on, I can see exactly what's different. But it is very important that you shouldn't overlay the reference and work from it for the whole process. You should only do this at the end or just before finishing the work. Painting directly over something won't improve your observation skill. It's like using a tracing paper is great, but it's not going to improve that specific skill. It is much better if you keep the reference image on another screen or print it out or put it on a tablet in front of you and only overlay the reference and start comparing like I do here. When you get to a point when you feel like, okay, now it would be a great time for someone to critique my work and to help me to see how I can improve it. So you can see I have a reference layer or group which I can turn on and off and I can see before and after. Now, what I usually do is that I align the eyes because that's the focus or central point of normally a portrait. If I turn it on and off, I can already see a couple of problems here. And to mark these problems, I usually create a separate layer where I can review my work. So turning this on and off, I can see first of all that the ears are too low immediately. That's one of the problems that I can mark myself. So the ears are supposed to be somewhere around there and I can check where they are supposed to end somewhere around here and on the other side as well somewhere around there. That's actually quite close, but the top is definitely far. Now, the other thing I can see is that the shape of the head is slightly different. Although I tried to have this stance captured, I couldn't nail it completely because it is more on an angle than my drawing. So the head at the moment is something like that. That's the angle, but when I turn on the reference, you can see it is actually more like this. Well, it might be a little bit too far, something like that. So that's definitely something again that I need to fix. Also, the stance, you can see that because this center of the head, the angle is different, the shoulders are also different. So Floki's stance is actually something like that compared to mine, which is something like that. So once again, the angles needs to be fixed. And because I couldn't capture the stance correctly, he looks a bit more like confused, while in the original photo, he looks fierce. He looks like he is going to go to battle. He's ready for some action. So even if we just show the shoulders and the neck, that can tell a lot about the character and his intentions. Another cool thing that you can do normally when you are reviewing your work is that you can go into the reference layer and if you created a silhouette or a selection of it, you can command or control click on that layer. So now that I have that selection visible, I can turn on my reference again and we can again compare the silhouette or outline of my drawing and the original. This again clearly shows the problem with the stance and the angles and the ears. But this is only enough to see the outline. But to check things like the mouth, you need to turn the reference back and forth and look at every little detail. Like the nose is quite okay. The eyes are actually quite close to the original. The mouth in my drawing seems to be a little bit too high. So how do I normally check that? So of course you can turn it on and off like this. But what I can do also is to use my review for it. And on the review, while the reference is on, I can mark where the mouth is supposed to be, then turn off the reference and I can compare. So we can see that my mouth is slightly too high. That needs to come down as well. So all in all, if I fix all this, 
it seems to be probably enough and it would improve it and get it much closer to the photo but let's not forget about the colors and the lighting that is also a very common mistake that I make and also I see this in other people's work who tries to get good at painting in Photoshop so a general technique that I do is to add an adjustment layer from the layers panel first I normally start with levels and when it is added I make sure that it is clipped onto the layer directly below it you can either use Control alt g or command alt g to create a clipping between this layer and the layer below it or you can use alt click between the two layers so when it's clipped that means it will only affect that layer and nothing underneath it so with the levels adjustment all i need to do is to get these points the black point and the white point closer to the actual histogram the useful part of the histogram and you can see how much higher the contrast can get and immediately how much more e exciting and interesting uh, the drawing will be of course i might go a little bit too far here but i just wanted to show you how much difference it can make but if you feel like that you want to improve the colors even more you can try other adjustment layers like color balance is another good one again i'm going to clip it onto the uh, original layer and here I can try to bring a bit more warmth into the colors by adding a bit more red or I can also add a bit more yellow into it if I want to make it more brownish if I want to make, cool it down I can add a bit more blue into it or cyan so you can see you can very quickly change uh, the look and feel of the painting by adjusting the colors around and when these adjustment layers are in place I can still go back to the layer itself and make those changes that I marked up on my review layer so for example moving the ears I would use the lasso tool and just quickly select the ear and then using the move tool I can move it up where it is supposed to be then I select the other ear just like that and I could even use control or command key and then move it with that so you don't even need to switch between tools because command or control key always gives you the move tool and then command T or control T will be the free transform tool in which I can resize the ear as well while I'm repositioning it and to fix the mouth I remember it needed to go down a bit so what I will do is I will make a selection like that maybe a little bit bigger selection and let's just check on my review okay so it needs to go down that much now what I will do is instead of just holding down command or control I will hold down command alt or control alt so moving and duplicating at the same time and that's how I align it because that way the original also stays there behind it and that just helps to blend things together I normally use the mixer brush tool for this setting up the mixer brush the way I have it here on the top you can see my options I'm just going to blend things a bit together so it's not as obvious that we moved the mouth around just like that and to fix the stance I can go back to my reference make again a selection of that silhouette and come back to my layer and while this selection is on I can click on the layer mask icon here at the bottom of the layers panel and I can always turn this off if I want to by shift clicking on the mask itself so I can see already that subtle change makes a big difference so helps to get that stance that we were looking for but again command clicking on the mask now I can see that I need a bit more detail here and the ears are still not 100% and also the top of the head needs a little bit more extra there but now that I have the mask what I can just do is to select the layer without having the selection on and using the mixer brush I can just very quickly blend details until they reach the edge of my selection now this is more like cheating because obviously I very quickly get those details right and the silhouette in place the same thing here I can do and just bring those details up until I 
get the silhouette perfectly to the same thing what we had in the photo and having done these few fixes if we turn on the reference now we can see that it is much closer now I only need to fix the direction of the head which is actually already sort of in place apart from this drawing here on the forehead so that needs to be fixed once again what I will do for that is to make a selection of this and to be honest it would be better if I use feathering on that so I will use maybe 10 pixels feather and draw around this feathering helps to make a softer selection so it will blend better once I move it around now I can turn back my review layer so I can see where it is supposed to go and uh, I can actually see that already so it needs to turn left a bit and I guess it needs to go up as well yes so what I will do in this case is to press command or control J and then clip this also this duplicate layer onto the original layer like that that way the colors don't get messed up and using free transform I can rotate it and after all these changes if I want to check how we manage to improve the drawing I can group all this together and I can call it Floki reviewed and then to compare the two instead of turning back and forth which will overlap the two on top of each other and it will make it a bit tricky to do it I like to see them side by side so I normally go to image duplicate and then go to window arrange tile all vertically so I see them side by side we can have this duplicate here the improved version and on the left we can just switch back to the one before the improvements so you can see our review really helped to get the stance corrected the little details like ears and mouth in place and the paint on the forehead plus also get the colors right with the adjustment layers now I'm not saying that the one on the right is perfect but with a little bit of improvement it got much better and of course if I invested more time I could work on the details like the clothes the beard the background the eyes and the lighting but for a first attempt in this series I'm quite happy how close I got to the actual reference image and I'm hoping to improve my skills so hopefully in the next videos I will be able to get even a better likeness of the references that I choose I hope you found this tutorial useful if you want to find out more about the whole process like what type of brushes I used please use the link to my website in the comment sections below you can also download the original reference photo I work from and my layered Photoshop file once you visit my site let me know who or what would you like me to use as the next example in this series. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and follow me on Twitter, Facebook or Google+. Thanks for watching and have fun painting!